started by first talking a little bit about Newton's second law. So if you have a look at the uh, attached uh, notes that I sent you that gives you kind of the description of everything that we're going to cover here in the next little bit, you'll get a good indication of what we're trying to cover and how we're going to take it from a practical side. So the first uh, new, uh, law that we're going to look at in Newton's is actually the second law. And his second law is basically the relationship between force and how force is a product of an object's mass and the acceleration in which that object is moving at, or its rate change of speed. So when we look at how the body actually moves and how it produces force, this becomes really important for us when we're trying to decide what tool am I going to use with my client, what movements are we going to do with them, and what is the forces that's going through our client's body. Now that becomes really important because in past programs, where I've kind of failed, is I used to pick an exercise and then immediately go and grab a set of piece of equipment and then come back and go, okay, this is how many reps I want you to do and this is how many sets we're going to do of this particular movement. Well, that's all well and good because it's one way of changing the program design and be able to change those, what we call the acute variables, which are reps, reps sets, intensity, those types of things. But we also need to think about what are the total amount of forces going through someone's body. So when we look at an object, so for instance, we have a kettlebell. So this one, its weight is actually not 16 kilograms. This mass is 16 kilograms. Mass is the measure of resistance of an object. So when we look at its actual uh, how this object is going to move, it's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on in the body just by looking at the mass. So a couple things that we're going to talk about that I think is really crucial is looking at the role of vectors. Now vectors are basically the line of stress in which that force is going to follow and the point of application in which that mass is relative to that individual. So if I'm 170 kilos and I grab this object here, which is 16 kilos, my total mass, before I even start moving, will now be a combined 186 kilos. So when we actually look at that, I wish I was 186 kilos, I'm actually 76 kilos, but we'll pretend for today I'm 176 kilos. So if I decide to move this object, it's really important to note that the forces going through my body are not the number on here. Because depending on how I move, that's going to change the way in which the mass is accelerating. And so the different directions that I move is going to influence the line of stress that goes through the body. So let's just take a practical look at this. So if we did a movement like a kettlebell swing, so if I'm moving with a little bit of momentum here, we'll cover momentum in a little bit, but when I'm moving in a kettlebell swing, it's important to notice that the higher I take it, the greater the line of stress or the change of the line of stress as I move. Okay? So if I grab onto my kettlebell here, and this is now changing the point of application of the exercise, and let's say I decide to do a squatting activity. So my movement or action is squat. So if I squat here, that's going to be a different point of application than if I squatted with the kettlebell here. Okay? Or the kettlebell here. Or the kettlebell here. Okay? So this action itself stayed the same. But how we orientated the mass to the system being the body is going to make a different reaction to where that stress or where that force goes. So that's the first thing that we wanted to kind of focus on in terms of vectors. Now, anytime I change my tool or my mass, okay, the tool itself could change the activity. So we gave you an idea of using a kettlebell, but what if we use an unconventional tool? This is mass, I'm not quite sure how much it weighs and what its total mass is, but if we did that same squatting activity with the ladder in this position, 
So there would be one front squat. We could maybe do a back squat. We could do an overhead squat. That would be three different points of application. The line of stress will have changed in all of those instances. So when the mass is out in front of me, there's going to be an upregulation to a different fascial system. When you guys come from functional anatomy, you'll start to learn this. And maybe if I'm lucky enough, I'll get to come back and talk to you about the role of tensegrity in functional anatomy and how that relates to the structure of the human body as well. But what if I took the same amount of mass but changed the point of application of it? So notice that as I grab a little bit closer to the left end of the ladder, the mass actually distributed through my system a little bit differently. The mass of the object didn't change, but how I'm holding it here now certainly did. So as I do my same squatting activity, I have a different vector going through my system. And the reason being is now the mass is distributed a little bit differently, which means the line of force that's going through my body is going to change. So same thing, if I go back to here, you can see how it wants to tip in that direction. I'm going to have to work a little harder to keep it level if that's the goal of the activity. Or if I move directly into an overhead position, oh, I'm really going to have to work a lot harder on this one side of my body to do a really efficient looking squat. Let's take that same idea, let's transfer it to a different activity. So let's say we did a lunging activity. So we'll still use the ladder as our tool. As I wanted to go through maybe an anterior lunge, I could step, but as soon as this mass starts moving in that direction, my body's going to have to work a little bit harder to decelerate its mass and to move it in the opposite direction. So as we know, the lunge is a great activity because it is working with decelerating my body. That moves us into the second uh, law, which is actually Newton's first law, but the second one we'll talk about, and that's the law, his first law basically states that an object that's in motion will continue to stay in that motion until an external force acts upon it. So as you know, if we tilt this ladder forward, it's going to keep going until we actually act upon it. Very similar to the kettlebell is that when that kettlebell is swinging forward, it's going to continue to go there until an external force acts upon it. So in that case, it's the system as well as gravity bringing it back down. 